Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing a video on will with endorsement for the EDPM portfolio. Let us get started. First thing I need to ensure that I am on no spacing and that is done. All right. Also, you're seeing a will that was typed. It is incomplete, but I have started it so that we can move a bit faster today. All right. The next thing I need to ensure that I do is to select the size paper that I'll be using. Now, legal documents are done on legal paper. However, if they are not so long, all right, for EDPM, we allow you to use A4 paper as well. But I'll be doing the video, doing my legal document on legal paper. Now, I am on no spacing. I have set um, selected the paper that I'm going to be using. The next thing that I need to do is to adjust my margin. I'm going to go to margins and go to custom margin. And while on custom margin, I need to adjust accordingly. All right, so the top margin can be 1.5 or 2 inches. For this, I'm going to put it at 2 inches. The bottom margin will remain at 1 inch. The left margin will be at 1.5 and the right margin at 0 0.5 inches. And because I'm only doing it for, uh, well, the will that I'm doing will be on one page, I will select apply to whole document. I will not go and set a margin for my second page because the will will only be on one page. Now, as you can see, it shifted a bit. And so my Head, my, the top margin is a bit wider, be now at 2 inches. The left margin is also wider than the right. Alright, so my margins are now set. The next thing is that I need to ensure that my document is in double line spacing. We still maintain a triple space between the heading and the body. See that I have one heading, this will be my main heading, and the rest will be the body of the document. So we still maintain that triple space there. All right, so I'm going to highlight everything else and press Control 2, which is a shortcut key for double line spacing, and ensure that I place it in double line spacing. While this is highlighted, another thing that we need to ensure for legal document is that the alignment is justified. Some would say fully justified. All right, so currently it is on left align and that's what it is on by default. So I need to justify so that, right, I want to justify, I will have now my left and my right margin, the information will be equal there. All right, and then the next thing that is taught with legal documents is that any line that does not carry itself over to the right margin, we use the hyphen to take it over to that margin. All right, so why do we use the hyphen? We do that because we are trying to prevent persons from adding to this document, all right? We cannot trust people these day and age, and so person will try to tamper with the document, all right? So we carry over any line that does not go over to the right margin. We use the hyphen to take it over there. All right, and so I'm going through my entire document and I'm doing just that to ensure that everything, every line is at the right margin. All right. All right, I have not type my attestation clause as yet. While everything is in double line spacing, the attestation clause is always written in single line spacing. But I'm modifying the top portion of my, my document first, and then I do that part. All right, so the other thing that we need to ensure as it relates to legal document is that there is no punctuation mark. And when I say no punctuation mark, I simply mean no commas or full stops. All right, so where there is a comma, we leave it out. And where there is a full stop or should be a full stop, we put a space. All right, um, so I'm just scanning through. Okay, so after Kingston, I have a comma, so I'm going to take that out. 
and then I'm seeing where my numbers are, one dot, two dot, so I'm going to take out that, all right. All right, note also, look at number two, I appoint my beloved wife, Mary Smith. It says that whenever someone's name is being mentioned for the first time, that name is always placed in capital letters. Mary Smith is being mentioned here for the first time. Her name is in all caps, right? If we go down, I think her name is mentioned again. Here it is, right? And the said Mary Smith. Then you don't need to um, place it in all caps. But for the first time a name is being mentioned, it must be in all capital letters. Another thing that is taught for legal documents is that we do not use figures. Instead, right, we write it out in words. I don't think I'm seeing any such thing here. Now, um, the numbers in an address, etc., can remain. All right? But as it relates to figures, you're putting in maybe a thousand dollars, you write that out in words. All right? And the date is also written out in words. 21st day of February 2021. That is written out in words. All right? So I'm going through, and this looks good so far. All right, good. So the thing that is left is for us to do the attestation clause. And basically the attestation clause is the aspect of the, the document where the signing takes place. All right, so let us look at that as we go along now. All right, so let's do this together. All right, so I have signed by the name testator. All right, I'm going to set a bracket at a tab at, double click on the tab bar. All right, I'm going to roll a bar to get the tab stop. I'm going to set a three inch tab, select set, press OK. And I'm going to just tab over at three inches and put a bracket. All right, and I'm going to do that for everything going down. Now, once I have that bracket there, I need to ensure that my document is on no spacing when I enter. Why? Because the attestation clause is written in single line spacing. All right. Once I set it, it will jump off from time to time. So you'll have to set it back. All right. And my font size was changed. So it's now on single line. And I press enter. All right. So above name testator, Richard Smith. As and for his, I always try to see as much of the word as we can. Last request can't hold there. I'm going to press the tab key and curly bracket. Why I, I set the tab also is because it, and I put the curly bracket after at three inches. If I do not do that and I wait until I type, then I put the curly bracket. What will happen is that when I'm printing or so, the information can shift. Those brackets can shift. And, right, the brackets can shift. And because I do not want that, then I set the tab stop to prevent all of that from happening. All right, each other tab bracket. Subscribed our names. I'm seeing some corrections as witnesses. All right. All right. So let me see. So these should not be capitalized. They should be common. And subscribed. Which other ones? All right. Another thing that should be done, wait, and for his last request in his presence, in his presence, I missed off something, and in the presence, so request in his presence and in the presence, let me come here, top bracket. Presence of each other have 
let me bring up this subscribe power tab bracket power names all right and this can tab this out all right good so now that we have that what always happen now is that we need the space or the person to sign so i'm going to use the dots this time all right and for all of these blank spaces i'm going to tab out to the three inches those brackets should come straight down all right so it's always a good idea to set them as i said before if you don't they will not be in line and when the document is printed they will shift All right, let me carry this up a bit. All right. And then I'll write the name, signature of witness. All right, so signature of, of witness. Tab, bracket. Right, let me see if I can copy this. So speed up things a bit. All right. So we need we have two witnesses. All right, good. Next, we need to ensure that Mr. Richard's signature is on the document. So I'm going to put it over this side, and after the bracket, I'm going to have about one, two, three spaces, and I'm going to put the line for Mr. Richard Smith to do his signature, all right? I'm gonna start immediately under the line. All right, and that is looking like my legal document. Good, all right. Oh, another thing I forgot, because it's for the EDP and portfolio, you need to ensure that you have the heading, will with endorsement tab across and then you write your name and i'm going to say this is dennis dennis dunkley ensure that this is in times new woman font size 12. all right and i'm going to also ensure that i have different first page all right and close well, I don't need to put different first page, seeing that it is one. No, I still want to do it. Why? I'm going to put endorsement on page two. So I'm going to copy this because it's going to disappear once I select different first page. I should have selected different first page as I started, and then it would not have disappeared. All right, so there it is. So this is my will. All right. Okay, so it's now time for us to do our endorsement, and that would be on page two. All right, I'm seeing this information here because of how I would have done this at the beginning. So let me just take that out. But as you can see, it is still on page one. All right, so I am now going to change the orientation of my page two to landscape. All right, to landscape to do my endorsement. There's a video on endorsement and you need to watch that to see how this should be done. All right, or what it is. But I'm going to change my paper orientation to landscape. All right. Now, as you can see, once I selected landscape, the entire document was changed in that orientation. And I do not want that. I only want my paper tool to be placed in landscape. So I'm going to select undo. All right. By doing that, all right, everything is as it was. And my cursor is still on page two. So I'm going to go. On page layout, page setup, and I'm going to go to breaks, and I'm going to select next page. On the section break, I'm going to select next page. All right. Now, while I select next page, I am going to change my orientation now to landscape. And as you can see, the first page is on portrait, and the second page is now on landscape. All right. But I still do not want... This information there okay all right so the next thing I do I'm gonna do a three a twofold 
All right, and so I'm going to go to layout again, and I'm going to select columns, and I'm going to select three columns. All right, and here you can see column one, column two, column three, and I'm going to put my endorsement on column three. Again, you can watch that video with endorsement to see what it is all about. All right, I'm, I copied an endorsement to my clipboard. So I'm just going to bring that over here. All right. So this is the endorsement and I place it in the center. So it's three columns and I place it in the center column. And that is it. I'm going to also center it on the page. So by taking it down some more, what do I have on this endorsement? The date that is in the will, the name of the person and the lawyer. All right. And that is it. Let us quickly go to print preview to look at this finished document. All right, so I have my will on legal paper. Let me try to zoom it up a bit because I know that many a times, once these videos are published, you can't see it. All right, uh-oh. All right, so there is the will on the left. All right, the margins stand out. I'm able to see my margins. Will looks good to me and the endorsement is on the center portion of the paper all right which is no one landscape all right another thing to note is that the endorsement will be printed on the back of this will so this paper that i have here in portrait orientation when i'm printing is going i'm going to print on the back and it's going to be printed on the back in the landscape orientation all right and that's it for will with endorsement i do hope you understood what took place here today if you did, please give the video a big thumbs up. Please remember to comment, to share with someone else who you think can benefit from this topic. And also don't forget to subscribe so you can always be a part of my new uploads. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.